Let's say you want to fit these two tubes together so you can TIG weld them or braze them together. You need nice tight fit up. Oh, I don't have very good tools for that. You can do it with cheap tools. Let me show you how. So before I had the milling machine and all these slick tools to miter tubes together, I would do this by hand and it's uh, really not that hard and the tools are really not that expensive. This is, for instance, a 7 8 diameter tube, 22.2 millimeters, and this is an inch and an eighth tube. This would be 28.6 millimeters. And if I just want them to fit tight against each other, something like a 90 degree uh, cut, it would be really useful to do this with hand files and stuff. Let's say you, you kind of know how to weld do you kind of know how to braise you just need practice uh, that was when I was doing it the most and um, it's really not that hard to get a fit up especially because then you don't even really care about the angle it's totally irrelevant you're just trying to do some practice and so um, all I got here is a relatively new hand file I bought this a couple weeks ago it's a little dirty because I <laughs> this is not a wood file but I was just trying to deburr some uh, piece of wood that I had that had kind of a sharp edge and I just kind of hit it with this so it's kind of loaded up some of it with uh, sawdust anyway um, all you're doing is you're using the, the half round profile uh, this is about a one inch diameter 25.4 millimeters it's roughly or that, that's the radius of it and so uh, if I did perfectly repeated file strokes on here you would be left with about a, a one inch radius half round and it would fit up pretty nicely against a one inch tube this is slightly bigger so uh, with with this radius on here I could do about a one inch tube or up it, to, to fit against there and then um, if I wanted to do a, a smaller tube if I wanted this to fit against the smaller diameter tube I would need to use a different file that had a tighter radius on it it would be pretty much impossible to get it with something like this uh, you can rough it in with like a hacksaw or something in the beginning this is about 35 thousandths of an inch wall thickness or about 0.9 millimeters wall thickness it's really thin so even though it's chromoly which is kind of harder material it's not going to take that long to get it uh, filed in to where it's useful so uh, you just you start making your file strokes and then you check it occasionally and if you want to get it to a particular angle you can use a bevel protractor like this uh, I also have this one here which is uh, cheaper and simpler and you could probably get this on there also and it would just read the the degrees and uh, anyway I'm just gonna get to work here and we'll probably do some fast forwarding because it's pretty boring so when you're getting started, you need to you need to get a groove established on the center. It's going to want to skate around from side to side. You just kind of got to keep it centered up. With hand files like this, you're cutting on the push. And so now I can check it against the other tube and just see where I'm at, you know? When you look at it from different angles, you'll be able to see the gaps and you'll be able to see where it's contacting. And then you just, you know, you just gotta hit the high spots and, uh, and move around accordingly until you get a nice fit up. And when you have practice and you have a good setup and you have a sharp hand file, you can do something like this in a couple minutes. I've heard people say that Richard Sachs who you know miters all his hand tubing with hand uh, his bike tubing with hand files uh, that he can do a joint in like two minutes or something. So I would imagine uh, you know with this really thin wall tubing when you uh, when you know what you're going for and you have enough experience you could do it really fast and usually get uh, plenty plenty accurate on the fit up you know plenty tight enough of a fit up. I'm gonna lower this down just a little bit. Uh, it was just slightly awkward for me the height that it was at and I think a little bit lower is gonna feel more comfortable. So the high spots are like right here and here and then over here and here and that makes sense because the radius of my hand file is for about a one inch tube and so in order to make it fit against this larger one I don't just go straight forward and backward I want to like kind of push a little bit to the right side and then push a little bit to the left side as I'm cutting keeping my file moving parallel to the same line all the time but just kind of uh, just kind of sweeping out a little bit, expanding so that uh, I'm sort of like interpolating a wider radius or something, right? So, see I'm pushing to my right and then push a little bit to my left. 
And you gotta be careful when you do this because if you go too far, then you just kind of grind off uh, the, the tip of it. So you don't want that either. Just take some practice. Yeah, already this is looking decent, you know, like I, I, I would want a better fit up than this in the an actual bike frame joint or something. But, uh, you know, a couple more minutes, I'm ready to do some practice welding. And, uh, you know, I'm, I haven't done a fit up like this in years. It's been since like, you know, 2013 or something. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. And uh, it really, it's not that hard when you get familiar with it. One little tip is that uh, if you're trying to fit it up against a tube, sometimes it's kind of awkward with the whole length of the tube, and the tube has some weight and you're fighting gravity, and if you just cut off a little section that's just, you know, an inch or two long, you can set it in there and it's a lot easier to see what it looks like and you don't need to support the tube perfectly to get that look. So. It's not too bad. I'm making mental notes about what my high spots are. Really doesn't take a lot of pressure to change things because the tubing is so thin and this is a new file and it cuts pretty well. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's okay. It depends what you're doing. Uh, you know, a lot of fabricators who are working with heavier wall material would say this is like a great fit up. As you get into thinner and thinner wall stuff, that fit up really matters and you want it to be tight. You definitely don't want to be able to fit your fingernail in there when it comes to thin bike wall tubing. You would like it to be as tight as possible. And it, it makes, it's a lot easier if you have a milling machine set up. And so, you know, just always try and get the tightest fit up you can. And, um, you know, you just spend a couple minutes. Uh, sometimes I would take a Sharpie. And so if I'm looking around the circumference of the, the miter and I notice it's a little bit tight right at this point and it's a little bit tight right at this point or whatever it is, then I've made a mark of that and it's a little bit easier. I keep my file still parallel to the, the strokes that I've been doing the whole time, but I just make sure that I'm cutting in that spot that I've marked. And that's just a matter of very subtle angle adjustment and, and like the pressure of which way I'm pushing. It's, I'm not actually gonna come at it at a different angle. I, I stay parallel to where I was. And then, uh, you know, just a little bit of hand filing on this thin wall tubing makes a big difference. I mean, it's, it's looking pretty good. You know, it's, it's not perfect. It's not airtight, but it's really not too bad. I think my biggest gap is right back here. I could almost fit my thumbnail through there. It depends a little bit on the angle. You know, you can, you can kind of swivel it just a little bit. So if you do need to get a specific angle mitered up, uh, then, you know, you can use a bevel protractor. This one's made by Starrett. You can get uh, cheaper and more expensive versions of this. It's a little bit hard to read, honestly, the, the contrast between those are the really small, small engraving on there. I always have to look really close and strain my eyes, but you can definitely get a pretty good measurement with this. And so you just kind of set it up against the one tube and then uh, you set the other tube on here. And then if you, if you loosen the black knob here, that, that allows the angle to change. And so I just fit these up against each other and um, whoop, kind of a handful here. I can read. Looks like I've got about a 87 degree angle or so right now. These small ones here, that's a vernier, that allows you to subdivide the degrees into five minutes. So every division along this scale is five minutes of angle, which is like a 60th uh, of a degree. And um, yeah, you just gotta read the vernier scale. So you can, you can get pretty, um, pretty fine resolution with this for that sort of thing. The other thing that you wanna keep your eyes on if you're doing an actual, you know, constructing something or just good practice is that uh, you don't want the tube to sit off just to the right side or just to the left side. Generally, you want it to be centered up on there. And so you can eyeball that. Uh, and usually that's what I would do. You can just set it on there and you can look at it and see which way it is. You can also, you can use a little square like this 
and you can kind of hang it over the edge and you can see which side is taller. So like if this little ear was way taller and this one was way shorter, then that would suggest to me the tube was sitting off to this side. And uh, you know, if I didn't want that, then it would give me a direction of uh, which, which way to file. So, uh, you know, right now it's, it's only very, very slightly out of square. And uh, depending on the task at hand, that might be fine and it might not be, and that's up to you. So let me show the setup here. These are some tube blocks I made. I think I went over these in a video about the whole bench setup. Um, but you know, you can make these on a table saw or with a couple woodworking tools pretty easily. And they just hold a variety of tube diameters. If you didn't have that, you could use uh, Paragon Machine Works tubing blocks for, uh, this would be 7 8 tube or whatever you want. Uh, you could use even my miter buddy and my miter daddy are tools that you could set into a bench vise to hold tubing and that would work. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can hold this stuff. You just don't want to crush it from the pressure of the vise. And if you put tubing in here and it's only got two point contact, it's going to be spinning around on you and it's going to flop around. You need a way to support it better. So like two blocks out of wood or, uh, or something like that. And then, you know, you just want it roughly at elbow height. You don't want it to be jiggling around on you. You want a nice heavy uh, bench vise on a heavy, heavy bench and then a halfway decent file and just get to work. And it's, it's all about, you know, you just gotta practice it a little bit. Hope that's helpful to you. I hope that uh, if you don't have the means or the mud budget or the space to get a milling machine or, you know, I'm not really a big fan of tube notchers. Uh, this is a good way to get started in your journey toward ultimately, you know, making an awesome bike frame. So um, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next video where we talk about something related to the topic of bicycle frame building. Thanks for watching.